The time has come. The time has come. Dude, so much confusion out there. Confusion is a good word. Especially people happening. who don't know you. Correct. Keepitplayful.com. If you know me, you know Keep It Playful, yes. Meta Morris, October 14th, 2012. First ever, 20, 20 minutes, no points. Submission only event of some of the best in the world at what they do. And um, no one had ever come from, no one had ever, no one specializes in that setting. So it's almost like they were all novices to the 20 minutes no submission. It was my first time in those rules. Right, and was Andres and was every other competitors. So they were all first timers to that setting. But for what they do and what they represent, they're the best in the world. Correct. And what did you represent? Andy Grace Jiu Jitsu. Dang. Right? <laughs> Very much so, my friend. And um, the survival mindset, of course, we know is prevalent. Um, obviously, I was on commentary there, you know, for Matt Morris. That was you? That was me talking in the background, keeping it playful on the commentary. And it was funny. People were like, Henner, you know, you freaking, the haters, of course. We're like, Henner, you suck as a commentary, you know, color commentator. You suck because you were there and you were, you were biased. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you were, it was funny because you'd be fighting and I'd be like, yeah, Andre has good control, nice position, nice pass. Going for the <laughs> so submission. complimenting him. I'm giving credit, but then halfway through, like, a little guard pass, I was like, you know, watch your base, watch your base. I started coaching him halfway through the fight <laughs> from the commentary that he but, couldn't even hear. But does that mean that you, did you overlook when Andre no, did a good move? I respected everything beautiful. And, and so did I, 100%. Still till now, when he, he does did, things, he did things, things and I was like, wow, this is solid right now. It was now. solid, you respected it. It's strong, like it's no joke. So my friends, for those out there who think that I was a biased commentator, keep what, it real. What would you have done if it was your brother? Yeah. <laughs> Of course, you get a little biased, you guys. Take your freaking cake and get out of here. Now, let's talk about um, let's talk about the fight itself. We have some positions to go over. We have lots of notes because we have some positions we want to talk about. But the truth is, it's much bigger than a position. It's way beyond. It's much bigger than a move. We got to talk about Andre's comments at the end there. We got a little unplayful, a little excited with his comments, and he even got booed by people. Why did he get booed? Why was Andre so upset after the fight? All of this has to be addressed in time. Let's start with some of the positions. Give me the first time code over there for what happened. 16 minutes in. Four Side minutes mount. down. 16 minutes in. Now, the first takedown, he you know, was a little playful standing up. A lot of people ask, why were you smiling coming in like that? Like, what? Like, no one's ever seen someone walk in with, like, the biggest smile. Yeah, I believe that in general competition, is looked at like we're going to war. Right. But every day I realize more and more how we're not going to war. Right. This is far from war. If there was a war, you would pair up with Andre and you would kill Correct. someone. Correct. If it was real war. Correct. This, this is, is not war, it's just a game. Jiu-Jitsu playfulness. Yes. Yeah, so Hidam was smiling, shaking hands, and they did their little thing, and very relaxed. Andre gets a beautiful takedown. But just so you know, too, I, I was waiting to be taken down. Right. Not that he can't take me down. Right. But I just want to get to the ground. I just want to start rolling. You got Because there's no point to the <sighs> takedown. Listen, you guys, I'm going to have to disclose something to you right now that was meant to keep between brothers until now. Before the fight, of course, you know, tonight training a bunch and talking and strategizing, you know, what's the best way to approach one of the best in the world right now? Pound for pound, arguably the best guy, who even though much shorter was heavier than Hidon at weigh-ins. Freaking strong as a fire plug, Hidon said, Henner, what do you think of just going in there 10, 15 minutes? Let him do everything he wants. Let him do whatever he wants. Position, pass, control, attack. Just don't give the submission, but let him have his way that's what he told me. I said, interesting, you know, good strategy. In other words, let him freaking tap himself out psychologically as much as he can go, 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 go and get nothing. And then we saw what happened with five minutes left. We'll talk about that later. Yes. More of the story, Andre takes you down like a beast, passes his guard in three seconds. Less. One second. Yes. It was almost part of the takedown. And then he don't just laying there. And the world was like, oh my God, he passed his guard. My friend, I mean, you, you don't see Hidon's guard in this match until 13 minutes into the fight. For those who are wondering, seven minutes remaining, and I called it on the commentary, seven minutes in, seven minutes left is the first time Hidon did his guard. And I know what his guard is like, so I'm watching this thinking, man, Andre, Merry Christmas, my friend. Hey, Accept hey, it while it's there. They want to see some techniques. 10 four, 10 four, 10 four. So Andre gets here after the takedown, does a quick little pass. He gets right past Hidon's legs, and he's here. And then basically he does the one submission that he did 45 times during the fight. And he's here, and he's here, and you see him start to grab the lapel. Okay? Thank you. Did you do that for him too? 
Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Lift the hips so the lapel can come out feet. Now, just to be clear, what Andre wants to do is feed this lapel, pull it through here all the way, get his arm, either be on stomach or side mount, come in, grab the lapel. For those who haven't learned this technique, Bravo choke, Samurai choke, there are different variations. From the lapel here, you can go in and grab and choke here, walk all the way around, or you can feed this lapel, this is the skirt of the gi, feed this, come around, and then grab this lapel, pushing it in. You can grab the actual um, skirt again over here, push it in, and if he don't try to frame those, come in and frame it, he'll pull this across, get a real tight feed right here, and then just from this pressure and this pull right here, you get choked out as well. That's what you can do with the neck hug though. You can do with the neck hug here, boom, and you put pressure and your chest pushes it. Unfortunately though, he don't has learned that technique. Yes. But that's what he was going for, to give credit to the option that he was trying to create. Now, at, um, at, at 16 minutes or so, about four minutes in, is when Andre ended up in the north-south right here, boom. He, he was completely asleep down here. Andre grabbed the belt, death grip, and was just here 100% locked on. Realizing he don't would do nothing, he started to pry this arm a little bit, boom, started to attack a little, and then eventually he started looking to have this, started going for the arm right here. Slip your head out, grab the pants like you did. He slipped his head out, then he don't did a little push away, and legs came in the party all the way in. And then Andre was over, he don't head slipped out, boom, and then back to the open guard. Why did you feel that like you wanted to get out at that moment? Is it, I mean, there, there was obviously, like, besides the same Bravo choke the whole time, that was for one second that I felt scoop. him possibly going for my arm, mm -hmm. which allowed a tremendous amount of space, so then naturally the guard was what would be in the next position. Right, I think, yeah, he don't just like some, the fact that he was attacking and he gave space, he don't, okay, I'll take the space. But when Andre's in full lockdown of side course. control mode, you never attempted to escape then. You have to understand that from full control to the final submission, there has to be multiple windows of opportunity for me to escape. You don't go from full control to tapping me out or anybody without giving windows. Right. The question is, are you aware enough to see those windows? And obviously, right. by me laying down the way I was, I'm aware enough. But if you are impatient, trying to get off right. the For back, example, if you're control and submission, and the guys, every time they get controlled in sport because there's points, and there's time limits, this person can't wait for a window. Correct. Time is running out, so you better get out right now before the window, and as you try to get out, what happens? You don't see anything, and you actually and leave then, something. Yes. Not only do you not see anything, but you leave something sticking out. Yes, so he was more concerned with waiting for the right time of escape than escaping at all costs, which is such a prevalent theme in the, the kind of the, the sport-driven jiu-jitsu mindset, especially when there's time limits, rightfully so. Rightfully so, you just get out at all costs. Not with this guy. Bring your knee right through here. This was an amazing control right here. When he trapped the one he mounted? Yeah, it was the other side. It was the other side. It was this leg. So it was right here, this leg was in. He had this kind of leg drag situation with the arm, where the leg was kind of across. He had the lapel fed around the back. I don't need to do it again right now. But he was here and here. So Hidong's legs were crossed in a little open guard pass of Andre's. He landed here and kind of this upside down half guard where the top leg is trapped between the legs. And then from here, he was very relaxed, you know, checking. And, and very relaxed for a reason, because the control is amazing. Right. He so, was like locked down 100%. And there's no submission right here. All there is is an opportunity for you to wear me down to possibly get something. If you go crazy. Correct. Yes. But I don't, I mean, if you want to side mount me or mount me, you could have either one. So then he was here. You guys saw it. Andre was here. And then at, he thought, man, he was relaxed. I'm going to mount it. From this knee situation, he brought the left knee in tight. The right knee came over. Oh, he mounts it. And, uh, track and roll for Hito. As soon as he did, look at Hito did. Gracie Combatives, lesson number one. Trap and roll. And then Andre. <laughs> and I was a little bit late. I, not late, but I did not expect him to stand up right away. He was very late. I right. expected him to close guard and me be in the guard. I had him locked down. Right. But that was my bad. Yeah, but I his not. reflex is not to be on his back. No, but the guard is a good place to be. Drew People that. pull guard. Right, right, right. He did, he did. So, no, and he pulled on the end, but right. right there, I almost was like, okay, now I'm going to be in his guard. But then he quickly stood up, and now we're back standing. Yes, he Once was again, not, me down and him. He was not in the playful mindset. Guard. He was not in the playful mindset. Correct. Next. What do we got? He know, invites the mount, Andre jumps off. What did you feel right there? Well, first of all, I just, I, I a little bit messed up because I escaped the mount so quickly that first that time. Last time. That the next time I allowed the mount, it's almost like he had a little yes. deja vu, like, hey, hold on. I better not mount. Last time I mounted, I lost it. Do you think Andre's a little surprised? I think right Andre, now? 
I don't know. He seemed pretty. He seemed like he was pretty aware of, you know, you know, having, of course, trained his whole life. Um, at the press conference, he really talked about having you know, over 500 matches. Yes. So he did not mount. So he did. He mounted very quickly. He went like here. However, the guard pass happened the next time. Andre was here with the knee split or whatever. He went like this. Boom. Boom. Probably faster than that. Boom. He got up right away and just locked down. And, and it kind of makes sense, right? It makes sense. Like, for example, our grandfather, 90 years old, driving in the streets of Brazil with no license for the last 30 years. This is when he was alive, of course. Gets into some kind of traffic situation. Somebody behind him honks their car horn. They get out of their car in the middle of traffic. 90 years old, Grandmaster. He gets out of his car and he looks at them and he's like, what's up? Now, think about that. You don't even want to talk to that old man anymore. You don't want to walk to that old man. Because for all we know, he's got something up his sleeve, right, that you can't mess with. So when I allow the mount to that extent, it's, too it's scary. almost like I can't even go to the mount. Right. Well, who knows, he might escape again. There might be a submission from underneath the mount. Oh, we had those. When ready. things are that easy, you just can't take them. Yes. So, I mean, the truth is, People wanted you to fight harder to prevent the guard pass. They really felt like, you know, you gotta freaking keep the guard. You gotta fight for the guard. Why were you thinking it was okay to well, let him side mount well, you and mount? What are the reasons why you gotta fight for the guard? Well, you gotta fight for the guard because you don't wanna allow points. Right. That's why most fight for the guard. Yes. And then you don't wanna get submitted, probably even more. Yes. Because you don't wanna land somewhere dangerous. Yes. But there really doesn't exist a dangerous position. For you. For me. For a lot of people, bottom of side mount at the end of the game. Correct. Mount, they're getting choked. So. Of course, the amount of energy to keep somebody in your guard is yes. more than just defending all of their submissions. If you're good at it and you have energy, efficiency, Correct. and patience. So I can keep him in my guard, but it would have been open guard. Because right. he wasn't even going in my closed guard, kind of standing away, which, but trust me, it's good to be in someone's open guard. I don't want to be in his closed guard. So he did what I would do. Right. But then, open guard to get to the side mount, so... Don't get me wrong, I want to keep him in my guard, but at the right time. Right. When I know that he's got a little bit less energy and the time is right. So you have to be efficient. If you're not efficient, you're not doing jiu-jitsu. Efficiency and knowing. Right. That's a great point. In the 20 minutes, no points, submission only, he don't thought, if I battle his guard the way all the other matches went, battle the guard, battle the guard, battle the guard. Then when they got past Guidon, Octavio, Jeff, as soon as the guard, they battled the guard. Jeff's a little more playful. Jeff was different. He was like, let it here, take Jeff. my arm, let's see what can happen. And, and the funny part is, Jeff is very typical playful. Very, most playful the whole match. More, was most, most like you Almost Jeff more than me. Was a little too playful. Correct. He Obviously, was. yes. <laughs> but, but look at the two. The two guys who fought to the death to have their guard not passed. And this goes for them. And, and anytime you ever lose. Yes. Anytime you ever lose, the one thing that you're missing is what? The survival mindset. <laughs> yes, true that. If someone gets tapped out, it's not because, or it could be, but if they had a little more survival mindset, it would only help them out. Yes. Now, yeah, but back to what I was saying, and Octavio and Kaido both were kill or be killed guard, no pass. Move, move, don't allow it. The one time Octavio's guard gets passed, he's the world champion by the way, the one time the world champion's guard gets passed by the non-world champion, Chrome, he got submitted. So people out there who are saying, you know, why didn't you fight for the death not to have your guard passed? Look at the other fights and the answer is there. If you fight for the death 13 minutes in, you're getting your arm taken. I'm getting a little too excited. It's okay, it makes sense. And you guys, I had to keep it so neutral during the commentary that now you let the energy out. I'm not on the clock anymore, you know what I'm saying? Andre. Right now, it's free for all Henry Gracie right now. He's trying to take my back, holding under Oh, yes. Me, like holding under my arm. Once again, guard pass. You know, I'm going to sleep down here. I'm telling you, I thought you were going to go to sleep. I was going to come wake you up. But look, Andre got both lapels around the armpits, just so you guys know what he's trying. And it's a very good technique. So from here, he wanted to do this, this, and then step the hooks in and start attacking. That would have been good footage. That would have been good footage. But so he got here, and this funny part, if you listen to the commentary, I'm like, yo, he's grabbing little pals, he's feeding around, he's about to stand up right now and take Andre's, take heat on the back. So you were on his side for that moment. Oh, I was fully predicting that, but you, you had no earpiece, bro. You could not hear me at that got moment. It. But you felt the energy. It, it fell out, the earpiece <laughs> fell out. <laughs> so from here, look, you went. Working that lapel once again. This is a really dangerous position in north-south with the E when you have both of those grips. What's he on strategy here? Well, Andre is probably going to try to pick him up and take his back right now. He's going to stand up. He's going to rip both lapels straight up and put his hooks in. You don't knew that move. Though. What did you do? You just kind of connected him. He did this and like he tried and there was really, that was really, I don't even know what I did. 
They didn't look like there was that much connection. Well, I don't think he stood up like that. He got up. He got up. 100%, 100%. I have the video. 100%. Good. He got up. Your hands blocked his body a little. Okay. Like, grab onto me. Like, grab onto me. You can't. Yeah, then there was nothing left. And there was just a quick reversal. Back to guard. Again, you waited. He went for something. The opportunity presents itself. Correct. And you escaped. That was something that is so admirable. Like, the identification of the window of escape. That he don't, that's what we're trying to show right now is how he is the ability to be asleep down there doing all the bombardment and control and then when the window opens he then goes boom what do we call that energy efficiency mm. this is so important and the people out there who know he don't I'm sure derive from this the haters out there who thought Andre was gonna slice through he don't like a hot knife through butter and real quick those, are those people they didn't they weren't even present mentally to see the beauty that was happening here they're not it's not that they're haters well, they're not haters. They're just unknowers. Yes. They just didn't know. They don't understand this angle of jujitsu. Right. It's okay. But they and it's sure. not their fault they don't understand it because of who taught them and where they came from. And the truth we is, we learned from the number one survival artist of all time. Survival, Houdini, hundred percent. Correct. And because they did it, obviously they don't see it the and same because, way. And another reason why they don't know is he don't has been under the radar for ten years doing nothing, teaching right. jujitsu, not doing nothing. Sharing it with the world, dedicating himself to empower the weak against the strong, and Andre's on the front lines of competition everywhere in the world, winning, defeating everybody. So it makes sense why all the people, 70, 60, 70 percent, were 100 percent certain that Andre would submit Hito. So there was one time when he was side mounted on me, and it was very much where I oh, rolled yeah, back on the guard. Lapel. Yeah. So he had this he beautiful beat. lapel feet again, same thing. And this hand came to an inside hip block with the prevention of turning into me, turn towards, to prevent this. And the crazy part is it makes sense that he wants to prevent me from turning into him after a couple guard recoveries. Yes, he does not want guard recovery to be correct. He's 100% here. what he does want, which is what he's so good at, which is back submissions and back control. So he is inviting me to roll away. Yes. And I did roll away. But you did it in a more efficient way than he expected. Boom, and then I roll boom, to the guard. In other words, full roll through, turtle get up on the outside, back to guard, with no pause in between. Yeah, he's probably gonna try to tug that really hard and pick Hidon up and take his back as well. He stands up and rips on that lapel, because it's on the opposite side. So it'll pick Hidon's left armpit up and create a possible back mount turn. Oh. Nice. Guard recovery. That was a nice roll away. You don't knew that Andre didn't have. Guard, you don't fight in the hands here, double underhooks. You don't probably fold his foot in front of Andre's face. To recover. So I roll a little too far. Yeah. And most would roll halfway because they want to keep from being on their back. Yes, and just get up. Yes. And then they give the back like so many people have done to Andre before and he'll choke him. And I, I a little bit felt like giving him my back to even yes. defend the back. But I promised Chrome not to give the back. Yes, Chrome, Chrome said, said, "You don't know, give, give him whatever you want. Just don't give him the back." Right. That's his specialty. So I said, "Okay, I'm gonna respect do that. the training partner." And last, open guard. He don't wraps the right leg. The open guard attacks on your pulls. Yeah. So you were laying down right here. Yeah. And he kind of got to the point where he was like this, and you went almost for like an upside down hug of his leg. Yes. And then he got up. Yes. And he started here, and then he started running. He I started wrapping here, and he started wrapping. And it got to the point where he did the fist, he crawled away, and he's boom, 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 and he slipped out, boom. Oh, Ooh, this is nice. He's going to turn over the leg here. You can do it! You don't look to off balance, Andre. There we go. Ooh, close. Again. So I did go for a little bit of submission. <laughs> like I tried a little bit, right? Um, and I didn't try more because I had to wait for the right time. Because he too was in survival in that mindset, give nothing. He was just on top of you giving so nothing. So to, to, our, to our notes that we wrote right here, basically, number one most important thing is that he is the best at what he does. At his game. He's unbelievable his game. So much so that I said multiple times if we fought in his game, he would win by points. Of course. He would win seven to zero. Maybe I might make one point if I get lucky. Or ten to four, or ten to one, who knows? Right. Now it's not and he's not gonna tap me even in his points. Why is that? Because when he's about to achieve the side mount, even in his rules, I would not do what? Turn and do my back. back. Right. You would not prioritize the point over the submission. Yes. Because that's not your way. But it doesn't mean I wouldn't lose though to points. Sure. Of course. Sure. Um, 
So we got all these different positions, and there were many more positions that existed, which we can yeah. do a four-hour breakdown. And a lot of people said how the reason Hedon's promoting here this survival mindset, this self-defense mindset. And naturally, when they think self-defense, you guys tie it to the street right away, which is okay. Now, the only thing transferable from this performance to the street is the mindset. Correct. Not the positions, not anything but the, the idea of survival first. Now, this wasn't a street fight. The circumstances here were 20 minutes, submission, do your best. In that logical situation, any, well not anyone, he owns mindset was 15 minutes, let Andre attack for the fences, 100% go for the kill. Burn himself out mentally, physically, and then if he makes a mistake during that time or towards the end, he would seize the opportunity. It was the right, it's the right mindset. It's the mindset of you do what you can, not what you want. Do what you can not what you want. So in those circumstances, the idea of saying, I'm gonna let him side mount, I'm gonna let him mount, I'm not gonna fight to the death for the guard, because those who did, we saw what happened to them. Correct. Hold on. So I'm gonna let him pass, get to the side mount and go. That was appropriate for this situation. Now tell us how the mindset would transfer, but the, 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 the physical display Correct. would be different if it was a street fight. Of course, everybody thinks if it's a street fight, I'll do the same thing, I'll get beat up. No, he wouldn't do the same of thing. Of course, you Who can't let that? somebody mount you and side mount you in a street fight. Of course. Not at all. You let, maybe you might let them go in your guard. Right. But you take them down, you go forward, you try that foot sweep harder. Yes. You do whatever you have to do, you clinch them. And when they're punching you, it makes you grabbing them even easier, which he wasn't. He was very conservative. What's, so, the, what's the only part of this that is transferable to the street fight is the mindset that he don't had one priority that led the way. And that was nullify. That was don't lose the fight. That was, the, that was like number one, two, and three on your list. Wow. Number four was like, if he makes a mistake, I'll seize it. It wasn't, yo, whenever I want, I'm going to impose my will. Hot knife through butter. Who would ever go for a mistake? I'm sorry. Who would ever go for a submission at any time other than their partners, their opponent making a, giving a mistake? Everybody does. Yes. And that's why they lose control. That's they why lose they lose positions. control. That's why they lose positions. Yes. That's why they get caught. That's why they get tired. So in a street fight, if somebody was holding me down in a street fight in the side mount, I would still relax. Yes. And I would stay calm. But the problem is they when, would not be able to hold him down and hurt him at the same time. Yes. And when they attack me and attempt to punch down. me in the face. For example, Andre would be here. Andre would be here. Okay. There's no lapel to feet unless they're wearing a long coat, suit, and a wedding of some sort. But there's no lapel to feed around the skirt or around the neck. So we're here. He don't want to be hugging and holding. At this point, what am I going to do in a street fight? You better. You should want to hurt me if you're for real. Yeah. He don't relax. I'm relaxed. But I'm on top, so I got to win the fight. I'm the big brute. I'm the Dan Severn right here. And then he goes to guard. So the fact that he don't is capable of being in those inferior. Now let's show what someone else who would not have the Eddie Gracie mindset do oh. in a street fight. In a street fight. In a street fight, yeah, if you brute lands, you you if a brute, if someone lands on you in a street fight and you don't have this mindset, you're gonna do what you've been trained to do, which is what fight Get off no your back in less than three seconds. Because if you wait more than three seconds, there's points. Correct. You better so hurry up, right? Better you better get out now. So you push and you bridge and you push and you move, but you can't. Boom, and then you tire. And then you get your face punched into the ground. And when you tire, you won't be able to see the opportunities when they arise to escape. So, so interesting. So that's the only thing transferable about what Hidon did to the street is the mindset of respect first, neutralize first, defend against first, attack later. Now some of you guys say, well I don't want that to be the mindset. If I get in a street fight, I want to impose my will. And you will be able to get out. Let's just say 70% of the time, yes. if you get side mounted, you can explode out. Right. If you're very competition focused. If you're Andre. If you're very sport. And, uh, and everybody. And very athletic too. And even I myself will be able to escape under anybody 70% of the time. Right. But maybe 30, 25% of the time, I can land under somebody and there's just no way of escaping. Yes. And to be able to say, you know what, I'm stuck, but everything's okay as long as I'm aware. I'm managing distance. And I'm managing distance. And I'm not getting my face punched in. As long as you have that ability. The problem is the ability to be at that level of peace. I told he was almost asleep. Bottom of Andre Galvon side mount. One of the most dangerous side mount submission specialists. Mount known for submission in the world. And he was almost 
asleep, breathing through his nose the whole time. That's how comfortable he was in worst case scenario. Which means if he don't ever put in a situation against his will, he will remain calm. Now, and he'll wait for the window and he'll make his escape. Street or sport, he'll wait for the window and make his escape. There's got to be beauty in that. Because I'll tell you this, if you would have flipped the script hold, hold and on. you would have side mounted him. Hold on. Hold on. Everybody say, he don't. He's, he don't only defending. He's only defending. But I believe that so was Andre. Only defending. He was only defending. He was attacking, right? It was a very, the same way I was trying to escape a little bit. Yes. I was trying to escape a little bit. He was attacking a little bit. Now, Marcelo Garcia did a video on what Andre Galvan could have done and should have done. Great video. Yeah, great video. My question is, do you think that he doesn't know those options? Yeah. Of course he Every knows Every move Marcelo showed in his breakdown of he don't have Marc Galvon's fight. And more. Andre has mastered every one of those and more. So, now why didn't he go for them? Not because he doesn't know him. He didn't go for them because he knows. He was defending. That when he attacks, he might lose what? The position. So the same way I was defending on the bottom, he was preserving the top position. You know what? You know was defending the submission. Andre was de defending the, 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 the position. The same way, if he started punching me, he would give space. It's the same way that Chel Sonnen mounted Anderson Silva. Everybody was worried. But Anderson Silva was in no danger. Because Chael Chael was imposing no danger. He was more concerned with keeping him down than hurting him. And you can tell by how he was punching like this. Yes. Exact no same thing. Him. So, I'm comparing myself to Anderson Silva right now. Right. You were totally just down there, peace, because you knew there was, if he put a threat, you would have escaped. Yes. Just be comfortable. Right. That's the goal, is to be comfortable no matter where you land, which I think Anderson is comfortable no matter very where you land. Very comfortable, clearly. That's how he looks like. So. He was being very smart. Right. He didn't want to end up possibly give me an opportunity, I escape, and then now I'm on top. Right. He didn't even want me in his guard, let alone side mount or mount it. And it makes sense. And that's why. Because nobody can side mount and mount him, he wins every tournament. Right. Now, the only problem was this event right here, this type of jiu-jitsu, was not what he's been preparing for his whole life. Right. And that is the jiu-jitsu where nothing matters except defending yourself and survival and it's in, in submission and like you said maybe after you defend yourself then if it's available you take it if not you don't take it right you I only think, eat when it's time to eat yeah I think there's some people out there who still are like yeah you know but I want to be the goal I want to attack I want to attack I want to attack and that's a great thing you should do that you should train to attack and dominate and beat everybody but you should also invest one day two days a week to what if you were unable to Take what you want mm -hmm. when you want it. Unless you think it's not ever going to happen. Right. Is it impossible? Is it possible that somebody will dominate everybody forever? No. Of course not. Andre, yeah, in 10, 15 years, everybody the receiving end of that. It twitches. So my question is, how? what are you doing today to get ready for when you end up in the bad position? And that's what our grandfather's focus and goal was. One. And that's it, why he trained till he was 95. Yes, he trained till he was 95 because he kept it playful. Because he kept it playful and his main concern was comfort and worst case scenarios and being down there. And I think that this is a good time to talk about the, kind of the difference between your, the difference between who you are as a person and Andre as a person. Andre is a professional athlete. Jiu Jitsu is a very competitive sport on a very high level and his sole purpose within Jiu Jitsu is to prepare himself physically, mentally, warrior, to go in there and compete physically against the best in the world in 10 minutes and to be able to just slice through them submission, points, aggression, explosiveness. Now that's him as a person. That's him as a person and he also teaches. Correct. He right. has a school, he runs, he wants to teach, but he teaches people to do what he does. Right. Which is slice through. be world champions. And which that's is a to, great thing. Which means you have to be of the aggressive attack Focus primarily, 100%. And not allowing anything. Not allow a point, not allow a pass, not allow a side mount, not allow anything. Now, the thing is, again, that jujitsu is transferable to people more like him. That aggressive, go for it 100% mindset. It takes a certain amount of time out of your life, the amount of training. You don't do, you don't train that once, twice a week. You have to live that. Now, he don't, hasn't trained professionally to compete on that level. It wasn't a concern of his for the last 10 years. It really has not even been in his concern. He teaches every day, trains with his students, travels around the world. We make good videos. People learn all over the world. But the mindset here is not that of a training professional athlete to compete with other professional athletes to crack skulls. Which means Andre physically and in a certain ways technically, in the ways of his game, mm -hmm. is so much more committed to that. 
and, and, and that's his number one priority. And I just thought it was very interesting to see Hino in there, knowing that that's not his training concern at all to prepare physically for this type of you know, competition, to go in there against someone like that, and then look at that. And if I'm watching this from home, right, and that's the most important thing, how this affects the viewers. If I'm watching this from home, I'm thinking, wow, Hino's defensive, energy efficient, timed escapes. I can do that if I'm not, you know what I'm saying, an animal of strength. I can lay and defend and look for the opportunities and try to seize the right place if I have a good defensive posture, hand positioning, right? But to be exploding the whole time is not for everybody. So unless you have the time to train full time to be a professional athlete, much of the aggressive kill or be killed jutsu mindset is not universally applicable or, or, or effective for the general people out there. And, and I think that's a huge thing that people take yeah. from that and watch and say, man, what, what, how does this affect me? And not that he was exploding the whole time, because there was very much technique behind what he was doing. His control, oh, no. his passes. There's incredible technique. So the question is, like, how, he worked so hard to be as good as he is. Yes. And he has, you look at how, how decorated he is, what he's won, what he's achieved. And it shows. Right. But the thing is that, how, what can you do? How much time can you dedicate to jiu-jitsu? If right. you can dedicate on his level, and that is your goal, then you know where to go. Yes. But 100%. if you want to train three, four, five days a week. But for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. And you want to be comfortable no matter where you land, you cannot basically dismiss what we're talking about. You have right. to give it time. You and I really time. do believe that you should train both. Right. You should train very sportive, allowing nothing, but also train if you land somewhere dangerous, be safe and be okay. You, have, you can train both. And there will be a time in your life where you might do more of one or more of the other, and then you might drop one or drop the other. But if you don't know both, then you're in trouble. Right, and the people watch this. Sorry, if you don't know both, you're not in trouble. If you don't, you have to at least know the survival. Yes. You have to know the survival. You don't have Fork to the day will come where you are not. Yes. But you can for sure do both. It's very fun. Yes. Be, play sport, and be street. Play sport and be street. Dang. That's what it is. Let me ask you this one. Would you rather submit people sometimes and get submitted sometimes, like all the other world champs we saw there who got submitted? or never get submitted. In other words, rather defeat and get defeated, today yes, today no, tomorrow yes, you gotta come back forth, back forth, or never get submitted, ever. Choose one. I, I think they're gonna wanna, at first, you might think you wanna win. Right. Because it feels good to win. Yes. Because you walk away, like you feel better about yourself when you tap somebody. But if you can learn to basically feel good about being the person that nobody beats, Right. That's like a whole different level of like taking from the training. You go roll tomorrow with one of your training partners and they don't even tap you. They tap you every year. I'm sorry, for the whole year, every day. Right. And then one day you don't get tapped anymore. Like you're excited right now. That's a good accomplishment. Right. Would you rather win sometimes or survive every time? If you want to train jujitsu until you're 75 or older, or older, you have to pick option B. You have to, you have to. Option A is not sustainable. Now, some people said, well, because it was a tournament and it was a spectacle and it was a, you know, it was on TV and we were supposed to watch it. People said, man, for entertainment purposes, Hiron should have been attacking the whole time. He should have done what everybody else did, which is risked it all for the submission, even if that meant getting caught in the process. They weren't there though. What do you mean? They weren't there. They weren't the ones in the Yeah, room. you're not the one in there. I, I, I don't want to get tapped out. <laughs> right, so bottom line is... Go, go roll him at his school, go get tapped out. Go call him up. So the thing is, for entertainment purposes, you guys want to heat on to sacrifice and risk and, and make mistakes and get caught in the process like everybody else did. It, and I believe me, it is entertaining to watch people be impatient. Yeah, it's just to I go. I like to watch that. Now, and rules do that to you. No time, short time limits and points cause you to spark it up to where you make mistakes in fighting for that point and you get caught in the submission. And now, there's only one problem. Hiron is not an entertainer. Hiron is an educator, not an entertainer. So he was there to show that against one of the best in the world, you cannot go, 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 go. That's not how you fight against that person. People were 100% sure, everyone except for the people who know Hiron, Except people who train physically have rolled with him or learned directly from him. Every other person 
who researched both of them, was 100% sure Andre would slice through him, no problem. Submission. And if he don't would have fought the way Andre fights, you would have got tapped for sure. Oh my gosh, of course. Now, the one thing I did want to say was, at the end of the fight, I went and interviewed both of them in my suit, in my bare feet. I had to be neutral, you know? So I interviewed Andre first, let him have his time. He said what he wanted to say. And he's, it's crazy how he fought very nice. It was so admirable. The battle was beautiful. Most of the world watched and said, wow, that guy Andre got one right there. He won. Yes. Because most of the world was counting points. Yes. So they that's, that's what they're programmed. Correct. So they watch Andre, this guy, you know, current top of the world, ADCC, weight, absolute, BJJ, IBJJF, every front, world champion, every title. And you look at him, and he did incredible. He attacked, he had great positional dominance, couldn't close the deal, but he was there. Then he got up there, and he started making some comments that in the crowd, people, he was upset. It was interesting. When I interviewed him, I felt he was not happy. He was, like, angry. And the people felt it, because he made some remarks that caused some booing. And one of the things he said was that these are Hedon's rules. Hedon's rules. And that if we fought under my rules, we should see you fight under my rules and let's see what happens. Which I already clarified. Oh yeah, he don't have no question what would happen. Great. And people booed that. I think part of the sentiment in the crowd was, you know, to say, okay, we fought with no points and a 20 minute time limit where all you had to do is submit the other person. In other words, this is very liberal. It's a very liberal fighting situation. And at the end of the fight, after everything is said and done, you get on the mic and say, I want to fight you in a more conservative, controlled sport game setting of 10 minutes and every little point counts for something. Whether you submit or not, if you score two points and hold on, then you're the real winner. So he was, I think that's why they were unhappy, the people. And um, so that was interesting well, feeling in the crowd. Like they were like, yeah, well, why, why are you going to challenge him to go to a more controlled yeah. fighting setting? These rules were just go for submission. Do whatever you want. And if you can't close the deal, accept that you couldn't close the deal, accept that your attacks were not more efficient than his survival. That's just the thing. Look at it and take from it. And just because it was a draw doesn't mean the world didn't learn so much about jiu-jitsu from watching that. Now, the other question is, just from interviewing, it was interesting. Like, I interviewed Andre, and even if you didn't even listen to his words, but just the tone and his, his whole vibe was an angrier vibe. And then when I interviewed Hidon, I was interviewing him and he was talking like he was interviewing for like the Disney Channel at Disneyland. That's how playful and relaxed he was. This, this has to do with expectations. He expected himself to perform greater. Well, kind of like what everyone was saying. He expected himself to submit you, no question. Right. And most people who were watching, even people who knew me, were like, he don't, they were sending me messages on Twitter, like, he don't, like, I'm sorry, but this is not the match for you. You're going to get tapped out for sure. Correct. Submission guaranteed. Like, yeah, this is not he don't's day. And. Ex expectations, what were you saying? Expectations, it gets to a point where he expects this in his mind. And he did not meet his own expectation that he created In his himself. mind, he lost to himself. Correct. Because he did expect this. He did expect submission because everyone told him that. And I think he believed it with his titles. Yes. One would reason that he should be able to do that. And the only thing I expected was to not get tapped out. And if he made a mistake, you would go for it. As Correct. you did a couple times. And even if I did get tapped out, I would have to walk away saying, wow, thank you. Right. Like, thank you for being somebody who can tap me and teach me something. Yes. Teach me a lesson right there. It was worth it. It was worth, you know, the event and the time training. Major. Now, I remember what I was going to say. Tell me. Bring it back. What I was going to say is that there's a, this whole idea of me being a teacher. It's very important that you understand how being a teacher, the way that I teach, and many people teach jiu-jitsu, you can be so good to the point where he cannot defeat me. Right. I, says, I spend so much time in every single position, breaking it down from the bottom to the top, to how to escape, to how never to escape. Now mm. he also teaches. Right. But I would he imagine different. he's teaching for his game. He's teaching when you're underneath somebody, and he's teaching don't let anybody get on top of you. Right. I'm teaching, listen, yeah. somebody might get on top of you. Of and course. when they get there, you need to A, escape like this, B, escape like this. If those don't work, you need to wait. Yeah, it's so major. And, 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 and keep your thought. I want to uh, plug mm -hmm. in real quick. Pedro Valente from Miami said it the best. He said, nobody wants to be in a real fight situation. You don't want to be on the bottom of the side mount. You don't want to be on the bottom of the mount. And, and 
hypothetically in this fight, even like this, you don't want to be there. But the ability to be there and not be tapped out. How valuable is that? It's the most valuable thing. It's the worst because you're either going to be on top or bottom. One day in your life, you're going to be both. And the best analogy was like when Horion first came to America, our dad first came here, he was very much the, 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 trying to educate the American people about martial arts. But the thought was for the striking based disciplines that were here in the States when, when dad arrived, mm -hmm. what was the thought? We don't need ground fighting. We train to knock fools out 100%. We kill or be killed, perfect elbow strike, perfect kick. Yeah. In other words, their thought was we're so intent on not letting these bad positions ground fighting happen that we don't even study it. We just focus on the aggression, go for the kill 100% with the knockout. It makes a little bit of sense. It does. It certainly nobody does. Nobody would ever take me down. Right. Get the best punch in the world. That's what they think. So keep investing in that punch. The problem is they got, the strikers got taken down. 1978, 81, 2, 3, 4, 93, UFC, all the strikers went to the ground. Even the two strikers that fought each other, yeah, will go to the ground. So the point is, this is not a matter of choice. That I don't, I'm, I, I don't want to go to the ground, so I'm not going to go to the ground. I don't want to get my guard passed, so I'm not going to get my guard passed. Your guard will get passed, and if you're a striker, you will go to the ground. Um, the best striker in the world, Anderson Silva, is on his back. It's a ma not a matter of choice. It's a matter of acceptance that it will happen. And if you're not extremely comfortable in those worst case scenarios, guess what? Your combat situation is a nightmare waiting to happen. Because yes. when you get there, tell them what your grandfather taught you, end all, be all, and what the lesson was spending time in Brazil, the final one-liner. Learn to be comfortable in worst case scenarios, because once you're comfortable in worst case scenarios, there are no worst case scenarios. If that's not your approach to training, then you know there's a hole. And the hole is the day comes when you're against your will, put on your back, there's five minutes left, and the move that you learned from your sport coach of fighting your way out at all costs, which was supposed to work, didn't work. You just depleted all your energy because you're trying to fight the clock, and in the process, now you get choked out. You have to have the preservation mindset. How many students around the world are training jiu-jitsu as white belts? They're learning, they're learning. They're kind of getting beat a whole bunch. Yes. And then they start getting good. Blue belts, two, three, four stripes. And then from that point on, they're able to maintain this dominant yes, mindset. Yes, pretty much control everybody. Their dominant mindset for the next five, six, seven, eight, nine years. Yes. So they, they got, then they get they a figured black, it out. They become a black belt or a brown belt. It's champion, and, gold medal. And they're always on top dominating. Yes. Now, everybody eventually For the loses. seven, eight, nine, ten and years, yes. they got it. Until one day they meet somebody like who knows who that they meet that's a little bit better than them. Younger. They're on their hype. And then all of a sudden they end up on the bottom. And that's why you see sometimes you see black belts looking like white belts. When you see very top of the world guy, best guys in the world, sometimes beat other black belts in submissions, I'm like, wow, Yeah. look at his arms. His arms are so high and he's mounted on. He's underneath the bottom of the mount with the elbows up in the air. And that's because that black belt somehow slipped by seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years right. because of their physical attributes. Because when they were 19, they started, now they're 29, or when they're right. 25 to 35. And then when they hit 35, some 25 year old gets on top of them and it's over. Then they retire. Like I said, then they quit. Then they quit. Guys quit all the time. Guys quit in this environment. Yes. Because their ego is attached to being the, on top, dominating their yeah, whole career. Once they can't fulfill their own expectation of always defeating everybody, then they lose to their own head. They give up. So, like I said, when, when you keep it playful, it's the idea of sparring and one day a week letting everybody side mount you, letting them mount Take you. Take your back. Letting them get really close to a submission. Maybe let them catch you. Let yourself escape. Do a little escape. So it's, it's the commitment to being in worst case scenarios in a very like uh, scientific approach. Like you're studying jujitsu. Right. That's keeping it playful because you want to invest in your future. You keep it playful one day a week so when you're 52, right. you can still be training because when that 24 year old side mounts you, you have invested and you understand how to survive their offense. Major. He don't our yeah. goal is to keep you on the mat forever. That's the number one goal. It would be cool if we were 79, 85 years old, and we had some people who trained around the world through Gracie University or whatever, and they also were 75 on the mat hanging out, Boom. exchanging ideas and going over techniques. Major. Transfer it to the street fight mindset. Imagine street fight now. Yes. Would you rather win sometimes? Oh, man. 
or survive every time? That's a tricky one. I'm not really sure. <laughs> and if that's the mindset in a street fight, that matters more than anything. How could you say in your combat training in the gym, even if you're playing sport positions, sweeps and all that, that has to be the driver to survive every time. It's more important than any submission is never getting caught versus trade one for one. Just don't get caught. The survival mindset, which is fascinating, that he don't display with Andre, the survival respect and this, the respect of what they want first and neutralizing it before imposing what you want. This mindset is what allowed Elie Gracie to survive against the great Masahiko Kimura for 13 minutes when everyone expected him to survive for less than three, including three Kimura. Including Kimura. That was a survival mindset. When Hickson, at 18 years old, fought Zulu, who outweighed him by at least 50, 60, 70 pounds, the huge, the beast of a man in Brazil, 18-year-old Hickson goes in there. He was not dominating hot knife through butter. Hickson was 100% committed to respecting the attack first. And once neutralized, then he found a window. Hoyt's UFC 4 against Dan Severn, 100% respect for the wrestler. Neutralize those headbutts, those chin in the eye socket. Wait for everything. Wait, wait, wait. And there was no time limit. Then what happened? Once Dan Severn couldn't beat Hoyce, what was Hoyce's mindset? Now I'll take my chance. And he went for the triangle and he finished it. This and guess what? At 20 minutes, Hito was surviving 100%. Defend full respect for everything Andre. Uh, obviously, guess what? my defense mindset was only out of respect. The highest level Imagine of respect. Imagine if I was sparring with, you know, Mike. Yes. There would be no respect. I would just go for you it. You would impose your will. But Andre, the world champion that he is, he deserves you nothing knew, less. You knew you had to go in there fully respecting. But guess what? If there were five more minutes, we don't know what could happen. I know what would happen. No, nobody really knows. But we I do know. know. Here's how I know. No, we. Here's how I know. I've done what Andre has done. You've done 20 minutes. I've done 20 minutes with Hidon, and I was the freaking hot knife through butter, attacking the whole time, being the little brother. Guess what happened after the 20 minutes, my friends? All if, it's been video captured. It's on our website. Or you want to know for sure? Ask me on Twitter. Listen. At Henry Gracie. Oh. At Henry Gracie. Don't do that. I'm telling you. Don't do you that. You ask me, I'll tell you what happened after 20 minutes with this guy. <laughs> Attacking the whole time, you have to burn. And they saw the pattern. You saw Listen. Andre. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 15 minutes in. The only thing that 16 case. minutes, 17 minutes, 18 minutes. The only, hey, I'm not going to finish my projection. Hey, I'm not going to finish my The only thing I believe that can happen with more time is an opportunity for me to maybe get some dominant position. Right. And because Andre has not been equally concerned with Elu's mindset. We have no idea. We, we have no idea of his level of bottom of the side mount defense. And mount. We have no idea. We didn't see it. We didn't see it. But that's all we know is that maybe I would have landed somewhere a little bit more offensive and I would have had my chance. And believe me. He don't, didn't want to attack. If I would have had more opportunities, I would have took them. I died for arm locks. I died for triangles. You know why? Because I had no problem losing the position because there's no points. Right. So if you put me in position, I'll shoot. What's Good. the number one most important thing of all times? Number one is that really on a serious note, if I train a little bit more with Andre Galvon, I could take a little bit of his information. I could learn how to be more like him. Yes. And I would be more complete. I'm very good at surviving. And vice versa. No, calm down, bro. I'm saying, I know. Calm down. <laughs> My, I could learn position, maintain, get on top of the fight. There is value in me learning that if I choose to take the path of competing more in tournaments, he would be an amazing help to me. The same way that many guys are that have already helped me throughout the years. But even more. And he himself could benefit tremendous from what I have and from what our grandfather taught us. So. Same as in nature, the same way rattlesnakes don't have wings, Andre Galvon does not have the Andrew Gracie mindset. And he don't, does not have the Andre Galvon ability and mindset. Imagine me mixed with him. Rattlesnake with wings. Oh my gosh. Dang. That would be unstoppable. Give me some of what he has, I'll take the world. I'll just right. walk around taking everybody out. Yes. But, yeah, that's the thing to check out right now. The, the, I think one thing, most important thing, is for someone who's not training as a professional athlete, for Hiro to went in and did what he did, he just, he don't, the fact that he has the last name Gracie doesn't mean really anything. It just means that he just teaches Jutsu all day. But he's not training on the level that Andre's training. So to go do what he did, I thought, for the viewer, 
has to be, you know, a very commendable thing, especially when everyone expected him to get tapped out, not tapped out, but fast. Yeah. That being said, congratulations. I hope everyone took from the experience and um, you just have to ask yourself, you know, what is your mindset? Is it win sometimes or survive every time? And you can chase that mindset while still getting tapped out. He gets tapped out, we tap each other out, but we're still chasing invincibility first as our grandfather would have liked it. He would have loved to have seen the match. If he, our wa he, wa he did watch it, bro. He watched it. <laughs> let's say for you, hey. Hey, let's just do one the most important thing is that we just want to be on the mat forever. All of us who do jiu-jitsu, we want to train for 20, 30, 40 years. So, like I always say, you have to just be very, very playful. We have to keep it playful. I'm telling you right now, that is the secret. Because self-defense is important, right? Competing is important. But what's more important than both of those is the lifestyle. Is what Jiu-Jitsu brings outside the mat. Correct. And it's being on the mat twice a week throughout your life after you have kids and grandchildren. That's like an amazing thing. Beautiful. Don't just compete. It's the number one thing. Don't compete and, you know, get a gold medal and then you're the champ or get the Olympic gold medal one day and that's it. And don't learn to defend yourself and then stop training. Learn to defend yourself if you want, get a medal, do both, do one, and then never stop training. Never, never stop. Don't expect so much from yourself that you basically quit because right. you can't meet your own expectations. You disqualify yourself. Don't disqualify yourselves. Train till you're 60, 70. When you start losing and you can't pass nobody's guard anymore, great. Just sit in their guard and survive. When everybody passes your guard, don't think, wow, I can't stop the guard passes anymore. Think, okay, you're side mounted on me. Let's practice defending. And when they tap you, great. Learn from that. But when they tap you, say, wow, Jiu Jitsu is amazing. I'm still getting tapped out. This submission is beautiful. Just keep on the mat forever. That's it, my friends. When practiced with this mindset, jujitsu truly is for everyone. Yes. But only when practiced with this mindset. Correct. When practiced with the aggressive kill or be killed, it's not for everyone. And that's our number one concern is making sure that what we're promoting is what our grandfather promoted. And that is a jujitsu that literally anyone can do for as long as they live. That's our promise. That's our commitment. That was before the metamorphs and it will be from now for the rest of our lives. Okay? Thanks for joining us. Our grandfather's vision was to share the gift of Gracie Jiu Jitsu with people all over the world. Thanks to global internet accessibility and the development of a revolutionary interactive online learning system, his dream came true and his legacy will live on forever. Gracie University, let us teach you everything he taught us.